Hey, my name is Nick and on today's video, I am going to talk about how to collect all your music royalties as a record label and how this pertains to you as an artist too. Okay, let's get started with some basics. There are two main ways royalties are generated from music. One is from music sales and one is from the public performance of songs. So let's start with music sales. When most people think of music royalties, they imagine a fan buying a record in a shop for $5, who then sends that money to the record label, who then pays the artist their share. Or in the case of streaming, someone listens to a song on Spotify. Spotify sends 0.0004 cents to the record label, who then pays the artist their share. Yes, when streaming, it is a very tiny share. Those are both examples of royalties generated from music sales. Now, on the other side, you've got public performance of songs. The other royalty streams that can be earned for the performance of a song is in public, online, in films, on radio, or streamed, and the royalties charged are different for different countries and change if the song is being sold physically or it's being downloaded or it's being streamed. These types of royalties are generated from the public performance of songs. So now you understand the two types of copyright, sound recordings and compositions, and the two main ways they generate royalties through music sales and public performance, we can now go into a little bit more detail on how all of these work together and how to make sure you can collect all your royalties for you as a label and for your artist's music. Before we crack on, if you like what you're seeing here in the video, make sure you click on the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this on how to start, run and grow your own independent record label, hit that subscribe button too. Now I'll try and keep things as simple as possible because it is quite complicated by just remembering that there are four main areas of royalties. There is the sound recording royalties from music sales, and there is a sound recording royalties from the public performance of songs. There is a composition royalties from music sales, AKA mechanicals, and there is the composition royalties from public performance of songs. Now as a record label, the ones we are concerned with are the sound recordings. And it, as a label, it's our responsibility to be collecting these. Now, as a general rule of thumb, sound recording royalties from music sales are tracked and collected by record labels. And the remaining three royalties are tracked by various performance rights organizations, otherwise known as pros, and are distributed to publishers, labels, and artists. Thus, as a record label, you are primarily focused on the royalties for sound recordings. It isn't the job of a record label to sign or collect the royalties for composition. That's what publishers do. So if you are an unpublished artist or an artist manager, you will be responsible for ensuring you are registering and collecting these other three areas of royalty related to compositions. And if you're a published artist, your publisher will be responsible for registering and collecting these royalties. So what are these revenue streams from sound recordings? In summary, the main areas of revenue streams for sound recordings are the sales, royalties that are generated from physical and digital downloads of records, the streaming royalties that are generated from digital streams on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Deezer, and all the other music platforms in the world. Digital performance royalties are generated through neighboring rights organizations, such as Sound Exchange and PPL, when songs are performed publicly. There are sync royalties that are generated from TV, film, video games, and ad commercials, paying for the rights to use the master sound recordings. These come from direct deals or via third party agents who will take a cut of that deal. So how do we collect? Well, let's look at sales royalties first. As a label, you will collect the sound recording royalties from music sale downloads when you release music. These will be passed on to yourself if you're an artist or to your signed artists. These royalties are collected from your distributor. Next, we've got streaming royalties. As a label, you collect these royalties when the sound recordings are played in interactive streaming services such as Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Tidal. These royalties are collected from your distributor as well. 
There are digital performance royalties, and these are generated from playing copyrighted work publicly, for example, through non-interactive music streaming, satellite radio, music videos, FM radio, or a TV show. These are called neighboring rights. If you're based in the US, you need to register your record label with your releases with Sound Exchange. Record labels based in Canada, you need to register your record label and your releases with Red Sound. If you're in the UK, you need to register with PPL. PPL will also take registrations from any label based anywhere in the world. So if you're outside the US or the UK, you can still use PPL to collect and pay your digital performance royalties. Sync royalties. These are generated when a TV show, film, commercial, trailer, or a video game requires the master license for the recording. You get paid directly from the TV studio, advertising producers, or film production company, or games company. Typically, you'll have a sync agent acting as an intermediacy between you and the studio who will handle the paperwork for a small fee and will usually handle the sync composition license too. Then there are YouTube royalties. If you allow YouTube to monetize your music uploads and run ads, you can earn revenue from these ads, which are split 45%, 55% in your favor. Most distributors have an opt-in box to collect these for you. Or as a label, you can also sign up to YouTube and become a verified partner. Or you can use third-party platforms that specialize in YouTube monetization, such as Audium or AdRev. So what about composition royalties? As a label, you won't collect any of these types of royalties as you're expected to pay royalties to the copyright owner in the form of mechanical royalties. Now, most distributors will have an option for digital download mechanical royalties to be paid directly to the publishers or copyright owners who then take care of paying the artist. You should do this if your artists are published or expect them to be published in the future so the distributor can take care of mechanicals. You can set this option for each music release separately as well. So what about artists? Well, let's break it down, starting with sales royalties. So music you have signed to a record label will pay your record sales royalties determined by your record agreement. If you own your record label, the royalties will be going straight to you from the distributor. What about streaming royalties? As above, music you have signed to a record label will pay your streaming royalties determined by your recording agreement. If you own your record label, the streaming royalties will be going straight to you from the distributor. Let's look at digital performance royalties in the US. To collect your digital performance royalties in the US, you need to register with Sound Exchange. They pay out 45% to the featured performing artist and the remaining 5% to the AFM SAG after funds for non-featured artists. If you are a non-featured artist, you need to register with the AFM SAG AFTR organization. What about digital performance royalties in the UK? To collect your performance royalties in the UK, you need to register with PPL. They also collect for non-featured and session artists as well. If you were outside the UK and US, you can still register with PPL to collect your digital performance royalties. Let's look at mechanical royalties in the US. If you are based in the US, you'll need a publisher, an admin publishing company, or a royalty collections company to collect your mechanical royalties for you. If you are published, your publisher will register to your music and collect and pay for you. If you are not published, you can either sign up to an admin publishing company to collect your mechanical income, such as Cobalt, TuneCore Publishing, Centric Music, or Song Trust, who I recommend. They will collect your mechanicals for a 10 to 15% admin fee, and you will still retain ownership of your publishing. Alternatively, you can register yourself as a publishing company with ASCAP and with your mailing address, email address, and US tax ID number, get yourself set up. What about mechanical royalties in the UK? Now, if you are based in the UK, you need to register with MCPS to collect your mechanical royalties. They work very closely with PRS, so you can register with PRS for your music and be covered on both. You can instead to choose to register with an admin publishing company as well, such as Cobalt, TuneCore Publishing, Centric Music, or Song Trust. Let's look at performance royalties in the US. Now, if you are based in the US, you need to register with one of the pros, either ASCAP, BMI, or CSAC, 
to collect your performance royalties. Now, which one depends on your preference? They all offer similar deals. The two most popular being ASCAP and BMI. If you do play live, it's important you register your live sets with your pros as well. This means uploading your track list to the system so they can track your public performance to collect your royalties that are generated. Even a support act on a tour can make thousands of dollars if they register. What about performance royalties in the UK? If you are based in the UK, you need to register with PRS to collect your performance royalties. As mentioned, they work closely with MCPS. And once you're registered with both companies, you can collect both your mechanicals and your performance income from PRS. Like the US, if you play live your own music or you DJ and play your music in your sets, it's important you register your live sets with PRS. Once they have your live set in the database for the shows that you have complied, you can collect your performance royalties generated. And what about performance royalties internationally? So if you are outside the US, Canada and UK and your country supports music copyright, you can find your pro on the Wikipedia page, which I'll put a link to below. Okay, what about sync royalties? If your music is featured in a TV show, film, ad, commercial, trailer, or video game, they do require a sync license. You'll get paid directly from the TV studio, advertising producers, or film production company, or the games company. As with the master recording license, typically you'll have a sync agent acting as an intermediacy between you and the studio who will handle the paperwork for a small fee. They will usually handle both the master and the composition license licensing fee, often as an all-in deal, with the fee being split evenly between the master and the sync license. If you want to find out more about how you can run and grow your record label successfully and access a host of marketing and distribution tools, then you may want to join the label machine and get access to more content like this for running your music career. Just check the link below. All right, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.